as we work on integration or finding antiderivatives, what we're really trying to do is identify patterns so we can use our derivative rules in reverse. And today, we're going to take a look at another one of those derivative rules in reverse, and that is the chain rule. Our question is, how does the chain rule work in reverse? And the way we're going to do the chain rule in reverse is we'll use a method called substitution. If you remember, the chain rule said we took the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. So we needed to identify the outside and the inside function. We're going to do something very similar, is we're going to let u equal the inside function. Because we know the chain rule takes u and multiplies by the derivative of u. We'll call that du, derivative. That is multiplied on the outside. So the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside times the du. Here's what that looks like and how it makes our problem so much easier. If I wanted to find the integral of e to the 3x squared times 6x dx, what I notice is we have e to the stuff. And if that was just e to the x, its antiderivative would be really easy to find. In addition, the derivative of 3x squared is 6x. Notice the derivative is sitting in the problem multiplied by my e to the stuff. So that's going to motivate me to call my u the 3x squared. And then the derivative of u is going to be the derivative of that, 6x, which is always going to be times a dx. du has to be replaced with a dx, so we need the dx on there. With this substitution in mind, then, we end up with the integral of e to the, notice the 3x squared all becomes the u, and the 6x dx all becomes a du. And now I end up with an integral that's much easier to solve. The antiderivative of e to the u is just e to the u plus our constant. But the original problem didn't have u's, so we'll convert back. And we'll change that as to e to the, well, u is just 3x squared plus my constant. And that becomes my final solution. Let's try another example where we try this substitution trick. Let's try the integral of 6x minus 2 over 3x squared minus 2x plus 5 dx. We're looking for something where its derivative is multiplied into the problem. Notice if I took the entire denominator as 3x squared minus 2x plus 5. If that's my u, du becomes 6x minus 2 times a dx. And notice that is all multiplied in on the top. So we can use our substitution to rewrite this problem as the integral of the 6x minus 2 dx all became my du, leaving behind 1 over the 3x squared minus 2x plus 5 all becomes the u. And now I have an integral we can easily take. We know the antiderivative of 1 over u is the natural log of u plus a c. So then we just convert back to x's. It's the natural log of u is equal to 3x squared minus 2x plus 5 plus the constant. Let's try one more where we, before we make this a little more involved. Let's try the antiderivative, or the integral, of the natural log of 5x 
plus 5 all over x dx. We're looking for something where its derivative is in the problem, multiplied by the problem. One thing I see is if I make this entire numerator my u, natural log of 5x plus 5, its derivative du, the derivative of natural log is 1 over the stuff times the derivative of the stuff, dx. But 5 over 5 reduces, and I get 1 over x dx. And notice that's what we have, an x in the denominator times a dx for the remainder of the problem. That's multiplying by the derivative of the inside. So we put it together, and we get the integral of the numerator all becomes u, the denominator dx all becomes du, and all of a sudden, it's an easy integral to solve using our exponent rule, raising the exponent by 1 and dividing by 2 plus c. Now we just have to convert that u back to an x. So we have 1 half times u, which is the natural log of 5x plus 5, all squared, plus our constant. And we have our final solution. Now, it's nice when they work out like these three problems that we did, where the derivative is literally sitting in the problem for us to see. Sometimes we need to look for it a little bit closer. But to help us out, one thing we can do is we can multiply by a constant. and its reciprocal to make it work. Here's what I mean by that. If we wanted to find the integral of 6x plus 3 raised to the fifth power dx, this would really be nice if it was just u to the fifth power instead of the 6x plus 3 to the fifth power. So I might try to make u equal to 6x plus 3. Well, then du is the derivative 6 dx. We're missing the number 6 out front. What's nice, though, is because 6 is just a constant, we're only off by multiplying by the constant. I can multiply by 6 inside the integral and 1 sixth outside of the integral. Because 6 times 1 sixth is 1, and multiplying by 1 doesn't change the value. So 1 sixth times 6, I haven't changed the solution at all. But I have put ourselves in a situation where now I can use the substitution. We have 1 sixth times the integral of the 6dx all becomes my du. And the 6x plus 3 becomes my u, all raised to the fifth power. Now we have a integral that we can solve. We have 1 6 times, increase the exponent by 1, and divide by the new exponent plus c. Well, that's just 1 over 36 u to the sixth plus c. But then we want to change back to our x's using that u equation. So we have 1 over 36 times u, which is the 6x plus 3, all raised to the sixth power plus a constant. And we now have our antiderivative because we multiplied by our constant and its reciprocal to make it work. Let's try another problem. Let's try the integral of 4x cubed times 5x to the fourth plus 6 cubed dx. Well, 
well, this antiderivative would be really easy to take if it was just fi the u to the third power instead of 5x to the 4 plus 6 to the third power. So I think that's what we want to make our u. u equals 5x to the fourth plus 6. Then du, the derivative of that, is 20x cubed dx. Well, we have the x cubed, but we don't have the 20. We have a 4. So to make it work, we can multiply the 4 by something to make it the 20 that we want, because we can multiply by constants to make it work. 4 times 5 is 20, so I'll do a 5 on the inside and a 1 fifth on the outside to keep from changing the value. And now I have 1 fifth times the integral of 5 times 4 is 20, x cubed dx. All of that becomes my du. And the 5x to the fourth plus 6 all becomes my u. And it's still raised to the third power. And again, it's an easy antiderivative now. It's u to the fourth times 1 fourth. We also have the 1 fifth out front plus a c, which gives us 1 20th u to the fourth plus our constant. Converting back to our x's, we have 1 20th times u, which is 5x to the fourth plus 6, raised to the fourth power plus a constant. Let's try one more of these substitution examples before we look at one common shortcut that's going to help us out. Let's do the integral of 200x over x squared plus 3 dx. What I notice is the x squared plus 3, that derivative is x, which is just sitting up there in the numerator. So I like that. We'll make u equal to x squared plus 3. And then the du will be 2x dx. The problem is we don't have 2x. We have 200x. Well, we can multiply by anything and its reciprocal. This time, we want the 200 to shrink down to 2. 200 divided by 2 is 100. So if I do 1 over 100 times the 200, that'll shrink it down to 2. And I'll multiply by the reciprocal on the outside. So now I have 100 times the integral of 1 hundredth times 200 is 2 times x dx. That all becomes my du, leaving behind 1 over the x squared plus 3 becomes my u. And now I'm ready to take my antiderivative. This is 100 times the natural log of u plus a constant. Well, changing those u's back to x's, that's 100 times the natural log of x squared plus 3 plus our constant. And we found our antiderivative. As we're working with this process of substitution and doing the chain rule in reverse, there is one shortcut that I want to look at. And see how this shortcut can be used to save us the work of going through all the substitution. Because in business and economics, we use e to the stuff a lot. And so if we can shortcut that antiderivative, it'll be very helpful to us. So looking at the antiderivative of e to the some number times x, a is just a constant, dx. Without the shortcut, we would say, gee, if that was e to the u, life would be good. So let's make u equal to ax. And then du is its derivative, a times dx which means we need to multiply by that constant of a and its reciprocal on the outside. So we get 1 over a times the integral of 
and that a dx all becomes a du, and we're left with e to the u. And the antiderivative of e to the u is just e to the u plus a constant. And changing back to u's, we get 1 over a e to the ax, where ax is that u, plus a constant. This shortcut is going to be very helpful to us. When we want to do the antiderivative of e to the ax dx, that's just e to the ax, and then we divide by the coefficient of the x. That shortcut's going to make a lot of applications in business and economics a lot easier. Let's take a look at using that shortcut on a problem such as the antiderivative of e to the negative 0.1x dx. Well, instead of going through all the work of the substitution, we can recognize our shortcut. And so it's going to be the reciprocal of the coefficient, 1 over a negative 0.1 e to the stuff, negative 0.1x plus a constant. Now, I would go ahead and simplify 1 divided by 0.1 on my calculator to get negative 10 e to the negative 0.1x plus c. But that saves us the work of having to go through the substitution process. We just have to divide by the coefficient times e to the stuff. So if we want the antiderivative of 240 e to the 0.12x dx, using our shortcut, we know it's going to be that 240 divided by the coefficient of 0.12 e to the stuff, 0.12x plus a constant. Well, simplifying, 240 divided by 0.12 turns out to be 2,000 e to the 0.12x plus our constant. And that saves us the work of substitution when we're dealing with just e to some constant times x. But overall, the big process of substitution, letting u be the inside function and looking for the derivative of u being multiplied in the problem somewhere, allows us to take problems that are otherwise quite complex and simplify them to something we can easily integrate. So take a look at the homework assignment to practice these. Come to class with questions. We'll look at some applications, a little more interesting applications we can do because now the equations and functions can get more interesting. We'll take a look at those in class, and we will see you then.